This is the Form Labs Fuse One. And the cake is ready to come out of the oven. There you are, welcome back. I'm at Ingetype in Gig Harbor, Washington, and they've allowed me access to the Form Labs Fuse One right here. The Fuse One is an SLS style 3D printer, and it's got a build volume of seven by seven by 12 inches. And what's interesting, it is SLS, so a laser hits a powder bed of material and centers it layer by layer, ending up with a cake full of wonderful parts. I gotta hand it to Engitype because they've given us access to not just the machine, but the entire workflow you need to use to process the parts from the machine. First, we're gonna stage, then we're gonna print, then we're gonna sift, and then we're gonna blast. The first part of the equation is staging. And when you think about staging a print, uh, let's just think about consumer FFF. You have parts on a plate and if you have support, you, you need to orient parts the correct way. So maybe there's the least amount of support or the supports in the proper areas, or it's the most efficient layout because it's gonna take the least amount of time to print, but with the greatest chance of success. All of that thinking comes into play when loading preform and printing on the Fuse One. You have parts that are nested within a build volume, and the software is gonna help you figure out where to put the parts, and how far apart to space the parts and the orientation of the parts to give you the greatest chance of success and also have the shortest amount of print time. Now for printing, you have this file in preform and what you wanna do is send it to the Fuse One and you can bring it over via USB, sure. But what we're gonna do is send it over Wi-Fi to the machine. And in fact, Formlab says you can print from anywhere in the world. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna print from the next room, makes it easy. And once the file is here, then all we gotta do is hit print. Look at that! The print is done! The cake is ready to come out of the oven, essentially. Have a look though at this screen because you see some letters and some numbers. What Preform does is center in that information automatically on top of the cake so you know what's buried beneath. Essentially the joke that we hear is you become an archeologist. That belongs in a museum. With the print done, we need to open the door and get the build chamber out. To open the door, you unlock it via this little software switch here. <gasps> So satisfying. We open it up and inside we see the build chamber with the completed nested cake of parts. Below you see this connector right here. That is what allows the build chamber to heat up and that also provides a sensor so we know how hot it's getting. One little click right here. We can remove it and tuck it away safely for the trip. Also, there's this bracket holding it in. If I squeeze that, open it up. Now it's time to take it out and uh, I'm a little worried because I'm holding a build chamber full of powder and I don't want to trip. <laughs> I'm putting the build chamber into the sift. Here we go, kind of up a little bit. Perfect. This goes down. This part comes over, plugs in. Awesome. So now at this point, um, it's gonna get a little messy. So what I need to do is get some gloves on and a respirator. Here we go. That's the cake rising out of the build chamber. The idea is to slowly and carefully move the cake over to the sift plate. It's very important to get as much unused material over the sift plate because it can all be reused. Now it's an archeological dig. <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic Park. Finding the parts within the clumps of material is honestly quite fun. You can rub the clumps over the sift plate to get the printed parts, but as you do this, you start to see shapes emerge in the clumps and that's when you know you've found your printed models. Hey, look at that, look at that. Having an assortment of picks and brushes within the fume hood is essential, and it makes removing the excess material much, much easier. 
Once you're done, it's important to run the vacuum within the fume hood work area to clean up as much of the loose material as you can. A clean workspace is a happy workspace. Now it's time to use a sandblasting chamber. Honestly, it's my very first time and this was incredibly exciting. The machine uses air and an abrasive media to hit the surface of the printed parts, clearing off any of the remaining loose material and giving the printed parts an incredibly nice surface finish. This sandblasting chamber here is quite small and it was tough to move around inside, but I was able to get the mini Joel and the 3D Benchy cleaned off. Just like that, these are done. Remember, we staged these, we printed these, we sifted these, and we just blasted these with silica. And they look so cool. There's just something about SLS printed nylon that looks and feels incredible. It doesn't feel like something made, it feels like something manufactured. And I just, it was a lot of fun. This wouldn't be possible without the good people at Engitype and a big thanks to them. I'm at their Gig Harbor location, but they've got other locations up and down the West Coast. What's really cool, Engitype focuses on service and sales of not just the consumer side, but the professional and industrial side as well. And I encourage you to go to Engitype.com and send them a question or a comment or something. They're really cool people and I really hope you get the chance to meet them one day. Well, our parts are done. We gotta get going. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. I hope you learned a lot. Hug each other more and as always, high five.